Hey everybody, it's the coach. This is Thursday Night Football on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we've got what should be an interesting matchup between the Indianapolis Colts and the Baltimore Ravens. With that, let's get up to M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore. There to call all the action. We welcome in our broadcast team, Brandon God and Charles Davis. Coach, thanks. CA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the Inner Harbor and M&T Bank Stadium here in Baltimore, Maryland. Here's a scene a short time ago. The Ravens introduced to this sellout crowd and through a sea of pyrotechnics, out they came from the tunnel. We're set to go as the Ravens get ready to match up with the Indianapolis Colts. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles kickoff moments away. Quickly, what are you watching in this one? The offensive line for both teams, because both teams have a terrific pass rush. They've got to keep their passers upright. If they have a chance to do that, they can both thrive on offense and move the ball downfield. They left in the middle of a cold night in 1984, but the Colts are back, and we're underway in Baltimore. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So the Colts now coming out for their opening drive. And they'll be led out by their quarterback, the Stanford man. It's Andrew Luck. I love everything about Andrew Luck's game, but I also love his worldliness. Some of his formative years were spent growing up outside of the United States. I think that that's helped him when he came back because now he's seen the world. I think that helped him mature a little bit as well. Naeem Hines, his first carry, and he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. And here are the Colts' offensive starters. Brian Kelly's a great example of how valuable the centers have become in the NFL. A former first-round pick, he was plugged in immediately to be a starter to handle big nose tackles as well as blitzing linebackers and also able to move and get out into the run game and get to the second and third level and deliver blocks. Here's second and seven now from the 28. Here's Locke. It's complete here to T.Y. Hilton. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. 16 yards to pick up there. The Colts have a first down. I don't care who you put on him. He's going to be a handful of one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man, -man, maybe need some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. On first down, it's Hines. He's got the first down and more inside the 40. And all the way down to the 33-yard line. That good for 22 and a first down. One thing that's great about watching him run, Charles, he doesn't hesitate. He got to the left side of his own line and just went. So there's two ways to look at that. One, just absolutely unconcerned, just takes off and goes. But more the latter, I think, which is he has absolute confidence in the guys in front of him, the guys doing the blocking for him. He just takes it and goes with abandon. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Play action. It's locked. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Hindsight is 20-20, partner. Maybe they should have kept it on the ground again. Well, it almost looked like the O-line was run blocking again. I mean, they opened up a big hole last time. This time they opened up a hole, and the quarterback got sacked. Got a 
imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. Throwing his long. He'll find Hines out of the backfield. And he is going to lose yardage here. Officially, it will go as a one-yard loss, and that's going to lead to a third down. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. And now they're looking for 19 yards here on third down following two negative plays. From the gun, here's Love. Pressure too much. Down he goes. We call that sack I remember when I was a kid and all I wanted was a nickel so I could get that soda down at the fountain. And guess what? The nickel came into play well. Five defensive backs, they covered well, allowed for the sacks. Sodas were a nickel when you were a kid? No, I just needed the extra nickel so, oh. I, could pay the, so I could pay the proper price. Okay, how much were they? A dime? <laughs> what were they? Uh, 15 cents. To punt on fourth down, here's Rigoberto Sanchez. Cyrus Jones back to return for the Ravens. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. And this one's out of bounds, should be inside the 10, I think it is, at the six yard line. The field position game, such an overlooked facet, Charles, of an NFL game, but this offense, they're gonna be pinned back. What an ideal punt. An ideal punt, and it leads to that term, complimentary football, because them doing that, puts their defense in a great spot, doesn't it? Gives them a chance. If they want to be aggressive, try and maybe get a safety out of this whole thing, it puts them in that position. They'll throw on first down with Jackson. And that is incomplete. Showed off the arm strength there, but to no avail, second down. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. An incomplete pass on first down, that leads to a second and 10. And the former Heisman winner, this is Mark Ingram. And he's up past the 10 to about the 12. It'll be a pickup of five, and that leaves him with five more. Third and five now. I think we can safely say that those types of plays are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. Yo, 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 yo. Yo! From the gun on third down, Jackson. And he's got Snee. And able to get this one out just shy of the 25 at the 24. 12 yards to pick up there. Good for a Raven first. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at it, and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. This is Ingram on first and 10. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends, they're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. They take a shot downfield there, but it winds up falling incomplete. Well, that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, 
you'll open up the defense a little bit, loosen them up, have them back on their heels. They come up to the line now facing a third and ten after the incompletion. They'll fake the give to Ingram, now Jackson. And an alley to run! So he got nine yards that time, but he needed ten, and it brings up fourth and one. That was a good effort there, trying to do it on his own, but as a defender, you're in a tough spot because you have coverage responsibilities behind you, and if you take off too quick to try and get him down, he might loft it over your head. So better to track with your man defensively than try to go up and make a stop on the quarterback. Exactly right. What you're hoping is that your guys in the front seven can get him down. So on fourth down, here's Sam Cook to punt it away. Chester Rogers deep for Indianapolis. This will be fielded at the 17. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. And now Indianapolis set to take the field and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys, win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs, and that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. Luck and the Colts come up now first and 10 at their own 24. A shotgun snap for Luck. This one complete to Devin Funches. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. A gain of 11 that time and a Colts first down. And the Colts first down. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. They'll fake the handoff. Now Luck. And nowhere to fit that football in. It's knocked away and incomplete. Brandon Carr on the coverage there. The starters now defensively for Baltimore. Earl Thomas has the speed, quickness, and skills to be a cornerback in the NFL, and I think he would have been a good one. But playing in the middle of this field as a free safety, I think he's the best eraser in the NFL. Takes care of any mistakes that happen in front of him and hardly ever lets anything get over his head. Here's second and 10 now from the 35. Funches has it complete. And he will lose yardage back to the 34-yard line. That'll be a loss of a yard, and it leads to a third down. They completed the screen on the perimeter, but boy, that was textbook defense. Exactly as you're taught to play against a wide receiver screen, and they snuffed it out for a loss of yardage. The Ravens bring out an extra defensive back here on third. Block throwing again. And he's got Rodgers. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens 37. You know I'm going to lean towards the defender, right? You know I'm going to do that. I know. That's a tough situation for him as I see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball was not streaking towards him. Had a little arc on it. He's got to find a way to get his head around and make a play on the football. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 37-yard line. Throwing again is Lott. Hits his target to tight end Mo Alley-Cox. Give the Colts 13 yards and a first down. <laughs> I got a kick out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, Definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. They'll run on first down. Hines, he's able to work free for about six down to the 18. 
that's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. The last run got six, now second and four. On the delay, here's Hines. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Well, they're making an effort to get the ground game going tonight. So far, it's working. I like what we're seeing from the offensive line. They seem to have the leverage going and they're controlling things and reestablishing the line of scrimmage, moving that defensive front backwards. But also like what the runner is giving us, too. It appears that he's been waiting all day long to get out here and take off. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Here's Locke. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Ninth play coming up here on this drive. This is third and a yard. Let's go, defense. Let's get off the field. Out of the gun. Luck. The quick slant caught. He didn't get the touchdown, but he did get the first down as he's tackled at the one. And they got three yards. That's enough. A conversion, and now it's first and goal. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. They'll try to run with Hines. And he will fight his way into the end zone for a touchdown. Punching it in from a yard away. As his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. We got a little bit of everything on that run. Offensive line creating some space. But how about the guy running behind his pads into the end zone? What does that mean when a guy says running behind his pad? It means that he's going to be a physical runner. That way he's able to use his shoulder pads, his forearms, anything to ward off people to power his way forward. Benatari connecting on the extra point, and that makes the score 7-0. A pretty long drive that time, 11 plays all told, and it ends with a one-yard touchdown run. kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away this is fielded at the goal line and he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26 yard line and now Baltimore gets set to take the field and they'll be looking to avoid what happened last time which is punting the football but when you look at how teams play the game that complimentary football comes into play. How do I take care of my defense? How do I take care of my offense? Well, the defense is taking care of them in a lot of ways. Now it's time for the offense to jump things up and help their defense out, give them a little bit of rest. Yeah, time, time for them to give them a rest. She took the words right out of my mouth. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 26. The drive starts here with a carry by Ingram. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down.
First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Stepping up, he'll try and run. The keeper gets him seven that time, but it'll lead to a third down. Oh man, that wasn't far from breaking in a big way into the secondary. Read option, quarterback kept it. And while he didn't get a first down, he did get a nice chunk of yardage. Only a nice tackle prevented it from maybe going all the way. Jackson now. From the gun on third down. He finds Roberts complain. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. The Ravens get a new set of downs. Give him 17 on that pickup. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. It's a loss of four on the first down play. And on this play, the read for the quarterback was the defensive end, and he was totally focused on the quarterback. He should have given it off inside to the running back. Instead, he kept it and ended up taking a loss on the play. Second down, Ingram. And he's going to take this one across midfield and into Colts territory. Call it a gain of six on the play. That'll bring up third and eight. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. The Ravens on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This is third and eight. To throw is Jackson. He's got a team win complete. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. Got what they needed there. The drive continues with a nine yard pickup. First down, they go with Dixon. They'll fight forward for a couple down inside the 40. That didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just darted in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. From the 39. Jackson, and he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. That sack by the DN, Danico Autry. But nothing takes a start to have a good drive quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? No, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And old Mo is a very, very fickle man. Now after that sack, it's third and long for Jackson and the Ravens. Here's Jackson on third and long. Oh, the pressure too great, and he goes down once more. 
The linebacker Darius Leonard applied the heat. And we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. Here's Sam Cook now as he's on to punt for Baltimore. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. And here's the Ravens' defense as they head back out there now. And despite being down on the scoreboard, this unit, they've had some big-time hits. Sort of like us at practice the other day. <laughs> I saw you take a running start at that blocking sled. You took it down. <laughs> Bounced off like a rubber band. No, no, not at all, but you're exactly right. They are doing their job, but they want to add takeaways to it. You need to have more of those to go along with the big hits we're seeing. By the way, when I tried that and I bounced back, I noticed that you laughed with everyone else. You, did, you didn't try to get in my corner. No, no, no. Someone had just told me a joke on the other yeah, side. Right, I missed that. Right. Totally missed it. Luck and the Colts come up now first and 10 at the 20. Now Luck. And he will find his man on the outside. And he'll be upended after a gain of five up to the 25-yard line. Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. Here's a second and five now from the 25. To throw his luck. It's caught by Funches. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Now it's Locke. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. It's a safety blitz and a sack for Earl Thomas. A oh, free safety blitz, that can be a gamble, but it proves fruitful there. Yeah, you're exactly right about the gamble because oftentimes the free safety is the last line of defense against a long pass. And when he comes at the quarterback, he'd better get home and make the play. Otherwise, a big play could result for the offense. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. Here's Hines. Three yards is the pickup, but it leaves him still needing 11 here on third down. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Throwing on third down, Luck. And that is incomplete. And it is true. You can draft the fastest. You can draft the most athletic guys. But if they don't know the art of positioning, sometimes it's all for naught. In this case, in the right spot, he'll force the incompletion. Yeah, but had his hands on it for a second. Would have been a tough catch, though. Falls incomplete. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he's on to punt for Indianapolis. 46 on his first kick, this one in that neighborhood as well. So possession goes over here on the punt and the Ravens will get it. First and 10 from deep in their own territory. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. They've had it twice, they've punted twice. Not the start they were hoping for. Not at all, and let's face it, every facility we visit, everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice, so they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 15. Jackson 
That's caught by the former center, Mark Andrews. And he works it across the 25 before being tackled. 12 yards to pick up there, good for a Raven first. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. Jackson going to get this out to Brown. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. It'll wind up being a loss of two. And that'll make it second and 12. And that was well defended. And as a cornerback, what you're taught when you see a wide receiver screen, either you get underneath the play before the blocking forms, or you're going to have to fight your way through it by getting through some blocking. That was a really nice play there. Second down, it's Ingram. And they're able to get this one across the 35. They get 14 on that one. That's good for a Baltimore first down. Yeah, they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. They run, it's Mark Ingram. And this time the yards won't come so easy as they'll in fact tackle him behind the line. Coming up at halftime in a little less than two minutes, we'll send you to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman is standing by. He'll have highlights and analysis of this first half. This will be caught by Brown. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. That's good for a Raven first down, 15 yards there. Thus far, it hasn't been a real fun half for them, but a play like that, that may get them off the schneid a little bit, get them loosened up and moving. Kind of seems like they've been sleepwalking and still sitting on zero points. And it's not always making an adjustment. Sometimes it's just going back to what you know can work and finally getting it done. He'll buy some time right, and now he's going to use his legs. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Able to find a lot of empty space there, picking up the first down at a 21-yard gain. Partner, it's often the man coverage is easier for a quarterback to run against. You get your receivers going downfield. Those guys are staying with them, and oftentimes they have their back to the quarterback, which opens up a lot of space and room, and they don't even know that he's taken off with it. What a big-time pickup on that play. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. From the gun, Jackson. Sneed's got it. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. All that practice time came to fruition on that play. All those timing routes that they work on through training camp, OTAs, mini camp, and just regular season, they got it done on that one. An out cut, ball was delivered, and picked up the completion. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Now it's Jackson sliding out of the pocket. Now he'll pull it down. Jackson hit, and he lost the football. And the Colts pick it up. Right, let's be frank. You hate the fumble at the end of the play. But prior to that, I liked a lot of what was going on. Tucks it down, takes off, picks up good yardage. But in that portion of the field, that close to the sideline. Step out. Yeah, either get down or get out of bounds. Take care of the ball. Yeah, he had the yards, but then the mistake. A look at the running back, the man out of the backfield as he gears up to go again. He's been effective so far over the 40-yard mark here in the second quarter. Don't forget about those guys up front, though. They've been effective, too. 
the leverage game has been in their favor. They've been the ones who've been able to bend their knees, drop their hips, and get a little bit lower than the guys <laughs> on the other side of the football, and they've moved them out of the way for the runner. Sometimes that's tough for those big fellas. Not an easy thing for them to do. Following the fumble recovery, here's Love. Funches with a catch over the middle. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. On first and ten, Locke. Complete to Hilton. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 37 seconds to play in this first half. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Lock over the middle, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Jack Doyle that time, and it's third and short. You and I watched film yesterday, and you told me to watch his feet. Well, for whatever reason, his footwork just looked off on that throw. And you always love it when an ex-defensive back talks quarterback mechanics, right? Well, but you're good at it. Well, I, I try, all right? I don't know how good I am, but it doesn't take much to tell. His mechanics are off a little bit, exactly what you described. Footwork, that led to the incompletion. That's complete to Hines out of the backfield. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. A gain of 11 that time and a Colts first down. Now the Colts will use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. Two first downs have them up near midfield now on first and ten. Play action. It's Locke. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. It'll be a gain of 17 and an Indianapolis first down. Go, go, go. So we've reached halftime with just the lone touchdown here. 7-0 is our score. As we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach! Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to an abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. This one's been a hard-fought battle to this point. 7-0 is the score, with neither offense really able to get on track. But let's not waste any time. We'll get you right back out to Brandon and Charles for the second half. Okay, Coach, appreciate it. A one-touchdown game here as we get set to resume play in the second half. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This is fielded at the goal line. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Out come the Ravens now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about 
cleaning up some of the errors. But overall, I think they wanted to be positive with them. Guys, we're right there. Just not playing as well as we need to. Let's pick it up, and we still have a chance to win this game. Yeah, they do. We'll see if they can pick it up. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 22. They'll fake the give to Ingram. Now Jackson. Jackson hit, and he lost the football. And the Colts pick it up. And he'll take this back down inside the 20. And they came out of the locker trailing. Not a good way to start this second half with their first drive. Can't imagine that the discussion at halftime encompassed this at all. In fact, I'm sure they talked about, okay, kind of wipe the slate clean, start the second half, and let's go out and play the way we know that we can. That's not a great example of it. They didn't envision that. Here's the Colts now as they get ready for their first possession on offense of the second half. Their defense has pitched the shutout. Now they probably need to deliver a little breathing room, maybe make it a two-score game as they've got it first and ten. They'll run it here. This is Marlon Mack. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. A solid pickup of 12 yards, and now they're knocking on the door. We often give credit to the O-line there. Two tight end formation. Those tight ends block pretty well also. Yeah, and that's one of the most dynamic positions in football now. The tight ends who can block at the line of scrimmage at the point of attack, and they can also get downfield and catch the football. They'll run here with Mack, and he takes this one in for a Colts touchdown. Taking it in from seven yards away. And the Colts use the short field to their advantage as they cash in for six. Still plenty of time left in the game, but now starting to pull away a little bit, get some breathing room with that one. And I don't want people to think that NFL locker rooms are cookie cutter, that everyone's saying the exact same thing in every situation, but I do know that all 32 teams have an emphasis on starting fast. Game, you know, the second half, no matter what, with his first five minutes, first three, whatever, this was a big score to start the second half. Well, that drive started with not a whole lot of real estate in front of them in plus territory, excellent field position. Two plays later, pay dirt. is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And the turnover last time, that's sort of been symptomatic of their struggles here in this one. Good word. I like it, though, yeah. because you're exactly you right. Like that, don't you? All game long, they've struggled moving the ball, turning it over on the last possession. Is that word again, symptomatic? Yeah. yeah. I like that. Your analysis, symptomatic of the success of this broadcast. What I like is that you gave me the word, and I just kept using it. <laughs> Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 22. They'll run with Ingram here to begin the drive. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. Now Jackson. 
He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. That's good for a Raven first down, 15 yards there. Now that's often a surprise for the defensive guys when they see the big fella slide out of the backfield and catch the ball. Not something they usually go over in practice very often. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Let them know, let them know. Watch this. this is Ingram. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Kid had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. From midfield now, here's Jackson. It's complete to Snead. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts 40. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. First and 10, it's Jackson, and this will be incomplete. By the way, I got to apologize because I just realized for about the last four or five plays, I'm eking over into your territory up here in the booth. My bad. I'm going to get back over to my spot. Yeah, and we're not talking about our on air commentary. I mean, what is all this extra paper? I mean, this is unusual I know. for you. My bad. Normally, you run a really tight ship. What's going on here? Just like that incomplete pass, I'm going to try to tighten things up here for this next play. They'll roll him out right. He can run for it, and he will. It's just a gain of a couple there on the scramble, and now it's third down. So many times we talk about having good eye discipline when you're playing defense, making sure your eyes are in the proper place on a given play. Looks like that discipline came to the front there, didn't it? They were able to hold him for a short gain when he took off running. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Rolling to his right. He may try and run for this. And he'll only get this to about the 35. Well short of the line to gain. He opted to go with a scramble. Gets two yards, and now it's fourth. He certainly had plenty of success running the ball. And right now, I'm getting the sense that he's looking to take off and run every time he steps back to throw it. But they did a nice job there collapsing on him and holding him to a short gain. So on fourth down, here's the Ravens Pro Bowl kicker, Justin Tucker, out onto the field. It'll be spotted on the right hash, a 52-yard attempt. And this one looks good. It is good. Right down the pipe. And they will get themselves on the board here at 14-3. So chalk that down as an eight-play drive capped with a field goal. Yeah, as a friend of mine used to say, they were moving and grooving for a while, but they couldn't keep the momentum going enough to get a touchdown out of it. Tucker now following the made field goal, set to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Luck and the Colts come up now first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They'll start on the ground with Mack, and not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. 
The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. From the gun, here's Locke. He's got it to Hilton. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. A 14-yard gain for Indianapolis and also moved the sticks. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. and He's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. On the move to his left. He'll run it. I guess no need to force it when you can do that instead. First down, 18-yard gain. How about that scramble by Andrew Luck? Sometimes we forget just how big, strong, and yes, fast Andrew Luck is. When he came out of college at the Combine, shocked everyone, ran a sub 4 8 40. And he grew up a big soccer guy over in Europe, so he knows how to use his feet. That he does, and I think it has helped his legs along the way as well. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 43. Luck now to throw. He lets this one fly toward the back. And this is going to be intercepted. It's the former Seahawker, Earl Thomas. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. The good old cover three defense, partner. When you start playing football as a safety, that's the first thing you're taught. Middle of the field, be as deep as the deepest receiver in any zone, and break on the football when it's thrown, and pick it off, just as we saw there. And the Ravens taking the field. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. On the counter, Ingram. And he's going to get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. Here's Jackson. And that's going to be incomplete. A lot of contact, no call, and it's third down. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. He finds Roberts, complete. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed picking up the first. Jackson now, five straight completions here in this second half, first and ten. Jackson hit, and he lost the football. And the Colts pick it up. And he takes it in for a Colts score. The offense, they've had some sloppy moments. Sloppy there again on that one, and it could be the backbreaker. From a defensive perspective, if the offense is going to be sloppy, you've got to take advantage of that. And that's what they've done all game long.
Vinatieri now for the point after. And it's 21 to 3. So not only the cough up, but then the pick up on the other side, the scoop and the score the other way, the fumble return for a touchdown. So here's the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. This is taken at the three. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. And they weren't on the sidelines for long, but I'll tell you what, I'm glad you and I weren't down there. We could hear them, <laughs> the coaches from all the way up here. They were adamant, you've got to hold on to the football or else we have no hope. Yeah, it's easy for me to laugh sitting up here, but you're exactly right. If we were down there, that message would have been received a whole different way. Because turnovers, they've been a big problem for them. Got to take care of the football. Got to hold on to it. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 26. From the gun, it's Jackson. This one complete to Ingram. Give him six on the play, and it'll make it a second down. It's funny, throughout the time that we've been together when we talk with running backs about the ability to catch the ball, their eyes light up when they talk about open field and having one-on-one -on -one matchups, don't they? Yeah, they do. And that's the reason why, what we just saw, shedding those tackles, and that's what they're used to doing. It is, and it starts at the beginning of the play, one-on-one -on -one matchup with someone trying to cover them, but they also like those one-on-ones downfield after the catch when they're running with the ball. They think they're going to win those, too. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. And boy, they had high praise for this rookie receiver when we asked the coaches about him, didn't they? They certainly did, and obviously they liked his measurables, otherwise they wouldn't have brought him on to the team. Height, weight, speed, all of that. But how about what they really said? Competitiveness. That's what they really liked about him. The way he goes after the football, competes for it, and decides when it's in the air, it's his and only his. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. So much of the game today, we're looking for hybrid players, guys who can do a combination of jobs. And anyone who plays a strong safety position, now more than ever, is a hybrid type player. Half defensive back that covers passes and half linebacker that makes tackles. We just saw the linebacker make that play. The tally there, minus two yards, brings up third down. Well, they have had success when he keeps the ball running it, but not in that situation. I mean, I think we got an example of why NFL coaches really don't like their quarterback in the running game. Because whether he keeps it or not, he's likely going to take a hit, isn't he? No doubt about it. And defenses, they're looking to put that hit on a quarterback. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Jackson from the shotgun. And that is incomplete. This has kind of been the story all night long, hasn't it? An inability to really get much done on third downs, and it's costing them. Here's Sam Cook now, as he's on to punt for Baltimore. He gets this away. It's a good one, drawing toward the sidelines. And out of bounds, sailed over. Looked like right near the pylon. This one's going to be perfect. Directional kicking at its finest right down at the one-yard line. Could not have thrown that out there any better. When the ball hit the ground, I thought it might go into the end zone the way it was angling, but perfectly jutting out at the one. You think maybe what we saw in practice came into play there? You know how he put those big cans down on the sideline and then angled for them and, and, and shot for them? Looks like it worked out pretty well for him, too. Two times, two times. Hey, hey, hey. 
You got three, you got three. Three down, three down. Yeah. Starting the drive with a give to Mack. And he'll get this up past the five to the seven yard line. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run and it's second and four. Third quarter and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. 40, go! go. On second down now, it's Hines. And able to get it here to about the 16-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. It's a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. Trying to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. Hey, here we go. That's it, baby. One quarter remains here in this Thursday night matchup. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. First down with Marlon Mack. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. That sends him two yards in the wrong direction and leads to second down. Brand, that's clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. Off of play action, Luck. He's going to air one out. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. One of the toughest things about playing defensive back is pattern reading, trying to figure out what they're doing. And on that one, they had to fly, just sending the guy downfield with the in route accompanying it, what people call a dagger route, trying to hit the guy underneath after the clear out. In this case, though, they're not able to get it done. Yeah, they said forget the underneath route. They went for the guy on the fly, but as you said, incomplete. And they're going to get him down well short of the first as he can only get this to about the 19. Well, if you're going to run the read option, typically, you've got to keep an eye on the defensive end. And what does that mean? What are you looking for with the defensive end? Well, you want to play off of what he does. If he collapses inside towards the running back, then you pull it and take it yourself outside in. If he stays outside, you go ahead and leave it with the running back. In this case, pulled it and got good yardage himself. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he's on to punt for Indianapolis. Fifty-one yards on the punt there. And the Ravens will take over. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try to figure out what is working, and call more of that. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Operating from the gun, Jackson. Roberts has it. Give him nine there on the first down completion. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Now it's Jackson. He's got it to Ingram, complete. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 12 yards to pick up there, good for a Raven first. That's good for Baltimore's first down. First down, 
Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Jackson. They go screen. This is Ingram. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and that'll bring up a second and 11. You know the key to a good screen pass is, don't you? But you're going to tell me, good blocking? Well, good blocking eventually. But first is good acting. You want to let the defenders go past you, leak out to whichever side or even in the middle where you want to set up the screen, and then you do your blocking. How about the read, though, by the defensive guys? They weren't fooled at all and actually ran with the lineman to where the play was and smothered it for a loss of yardage. To throw again on second down. Jackson, and he almost intercepted it. They haven't picked a ball off yet. That probably should have been their first. And it's third down now. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden a secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. To throw is Jackson. And tight coverage there. It's knocked away incomplete. Another pass attempt, another incompletion, and they're just a little over 100 yards passing here in this game, so defensively, pretty good job. Definitely, because they were never really able to get the ball in the hands of their playmakers. So a lot of credit to the defensive game plan, and especially the execution. Their already slim hopes are going to ride on this one. They'll go on fourth down. They'll try and throw for it to Jackson. He can run for it, and he will. John Harbaugh not afraid to go for it this time. Doesn't work out. And the Colts are going to take over with a football. Well, they were looking for a clutch play there on fourth. Unable to come up with it. How about that defense, though, huh? How about that D? Yeah, momentum fourth. swing. And, you know, I remember playing how much fourth downs were emphasized. You know, because, as you said, it's a momentum play. It's also a big test for you. You know, if people are going to go for it on fourth down, they believe you're not up to the challenge. You want to show them differently. So from the 36 now, first and 10. On first down, they'll start out with Mack. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. Indianapolis moving the chains there on a gain of 12. The running game continues to be a big part of their success here early in the fourth quarter. And with those types of runs, that tells you they feel very confident in their running game. They feel very strong at this stage of the contest. And they want to keep doing exactly what we saw there, running the ball down their throat. On first down, they'll stay with Mack on the ground. And across midfield, he goes into Raven territory. Two yards on the carry there, it'll be second down. In order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, those three guys up front, the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends, they're usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers because it's usually five on three. And when they do their job well, the guys who play on the inside, those inside linebackers, they're able to just roam and hit. Take it in by the tight end, Doyle. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. 16 yards to pick up there. The Colts have a first down. Well, a clear running situation. Try to take time off the clock. He ran the previous play, set that play action up nicely. Boy, did they ever, because they had shown the ability to run the football. So now you lose your keys as a defense. You dive for the running play, and they hit them over the top. On first down, Mack. Tackle made there by Tony Jefferson. 
Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it, and, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. On second and nine, Luck. He completes this one to Mack. The Colts on third down. They've hit at 50%. Three of six to this point. This is third and eight. On third down, a run by Mack. And this effort will not get it done. He stopped well short of the first down at the 29. Just a gain of two there, and it's going to bring up a fourth down. What an advantage having an elite guy to build a defensive line because not only does he take up the space and let the linebackers run free, but he can also make plays himself, as we just saw there. Vinatieri now ought to try the field goal for the Colts. This one from 46 yards out. And this will split the uprights. It's right down the middle. And that will stretch the lead up to three touchdowns now. It's a 21-point game. So it's three more points, and that widens this thing out even further here in the fourth. And you know in this league, you can never have enough points. But this widens it out, as you said. And now it's all about ball control, isn't it? The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. Now a hit and a loose football. And the Colts pick it up. And they are going to score on the fumble return. Touchdown, Indianapolis. So they get the one score, kick off, get a fumble, take it right back to the house. <laughs> Two quick touchdowns within a matter of about 10 seconds on the game clock. It's like a big one-two punch that may lead to a knockout. So we've got a challenge. Our referee's going to take another look on the tablet. He's going to be watching to see if the knee was down prior to the ball coming out. Oh, I love what you just said there. You nailed it because if the ball shifting or moving before the knee or any other part of the body hits the ground, then that'll be considered a fumble. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. And on that last drive, Whitford on fourth turned it over. A good job by their defense, though. They held them to three, but this offense, they've got to be a little bit better, a little bit more careful here. And sometimes when you see these calls on fourth down when they decide to go for it, it's not necessarily the coach saying, I believe in my offense. Sometimes the coach saying, I believe in my defense. I can afford to go for it here because if we don't get it, I don't think we'll give up more than three. And that's exactly what you happened there. You think that factored in? I do. I think that he had that in his mind going into the game, that I'm going to be aggressive on offense because I know I've got a defense that can hold up their end. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Danico Autry, his second sack of the night. And for the defense, their third sack of the game. That number tells you that they're starting to put it together with their defensive game plan. They're starting to feel pretty good about what the offense is doing, bringing the pressure at the right time, and putting the quarterback on the ground.
The Ravens on third down. Not quite 50%. Four for nine. This is third and nine. Jackson. And that will be incomplete. Boy, it just seems like all game long there hasn't been a lot of sync quarterback to wide receiver on this side of the football. They haven't been on the same page quarterback and receivers. Heck, they haven't been on the same grease board when you draw plays up. They haven't been on the same surface tablet that you look at on the sidelines. Nothing's worked for them. They've got to find a way to start matching each other's movements. Here's Jackson to throw. He's going deep for Brown. And that's caught inside the 30. And he'll be taken down, but first he gets deep into Indianapolis territory. No reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. Offense for them has been at a premium. You wonder where plays like that have been all game long. They're thinking the exact same thing themselves, but they're also looking forward now because now these plays are really for next week, trying to get some momentum going. So the field flips here as they'll go to work at the 20 now on first and 10. Push him back. They run from the pistol with Ingram. And he's only going to get a yard from the 20 to the 19. So it's Raven football here as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. On second and nine, Jackson. He was looking for Nick Boyle that time. But now it's third down. That pass just a little bit off. It looked like maybe he tried to force it in there. Game speed, always different, no matter what you do in practice. You can't simulate it, right? So your decision making, everything has to be a little bit quicker. Sometimes it can throw you off until you adjust. On third down, Jackson. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. As this one moves towards its conclusion, another incomplete pass there. Thoughts on the secondary? I mean, they seem to be pretty effective in this one. Yeah, I thought that they've been absolutely outstanding. I mean, their job is to prevent touchdowns, and not a single touchdown is going on the board against them. Of course, they want to make it a total shutout, but hey, if you don't give up touchdowns, you got a heck of a chance to win. Fourth down, here's Jackson. And they will not be able to hook up there. It's incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Colts are going to take over with a football. So they tried to go for it for pride, but it really wouldn't have mattered. This one, it was already determined. No doubt about it. This one was over a while ago. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And a few kneel downs should just about do it. Now defensively, they do have all three timeouts, but very little reason to use them at this point. trying to find Mo Alley Cox is tied in, but it's going to be second down. The incompletion there stops the clock. Any surprise they're throwing here late? Ordinarily, yes, because you would think enough is enough. They've got plenty of lead, but I've seen this a bunch of times as well. The defense got crowd the line of scrimmage. If you just hand it off inside, you're getting your running back popped a lot as well. Sometimes the defense dictates it. If they're going to crowd it, you may have no other choice but to throw it downfield. This will be a loss of three, and now a much tougher third down looming. Now that's a nice play, <laughs> got me fired up, partner. But can they do it back-to-back -back plays? All the training that you go through as a defense for these situations, when you have to get the ball back, everything you go through, holding up the runner, raking it the football, getting to the passer, knocking it out of his hands, 
whatever way, they have to get the ball back. Now can they stand tall again for a huge fourth quarter stop? Back to you. On third down, Hines. And he'll take this up only to about his 18-yard line. Two yards on the pick up there. It's fourth down. Well, they got off the field on third down. An excellent job, an excellent defensive series. We always talk about adjustments, and usually only at halftime. But the best teams adjust series to series. And on that series, they adjusted so well that they got the job done in fine style. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez standing right on his own five-yard line. Averaging over 50 yards of punt so far as this one's away. A big boot that time. 57 yards the official distance. And control of the football switching hands here with very little time remaining in this contest. The Baltimore offense at the line set to get going. They've lost this one. Their offense has struggled. Do they try to put together something here at the end just to take into next week? Yeah, sometimes teams want to do that and coaches want to. I remember one time I was on a team and we were losing late in a game like this and you knew it was lost. It was over, right? And the coach called a running play and pretty much said to everyone, I want to see something executed well before we get out of here. And that was the message to the team. Just something to build Just on. Just something to build on, get it done, and maybe we can look at that and say, we'll get better as we go forward. Here we go, D. <laughs> Throwing on first down, it's Jackson. That's into the hands of the tight end, Boyle. And the clock will now stop as a timeout is called with five seconds left. They'll bring out four receivers, three of them being sent to the left, one to the right, second and four. One last shot for Jackson. And this will be incomplete. One second left to go. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. One final shot. They'll look to throw. He's going to let it fly. And that will be incomplete. They were going for a consolation TD, but it was not to be. And time has run out now on this game. So this one winds up an Indianapolis victory, and they were buoyed, Charles, by a big second half to put this one on ice. And I know a lot of people watching this one were thinking to themselves, I'll bet halftime was really interesting. Probably took the paint off the walls with some of the words that were said. <laughs> but I get the sense that it was much more of the adjustments they made. They came in with a game plan that we saw that didn't work in the first half. They made the adjustments necessary, went away from that, and then they got it together, got a spark, and then took off. It's really nice to watch in the second half. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. From Baltimore, good night, everybody.